Hey, folks, and welcome to another episode of Draft Talk on Pittsburgh Sports Live. I'm Alan Saunders, joined as always by Nick Farabaugh from SteelersNow.com, and we're talking every weekday in the month of April leading up to the 2021 NFL Draft, which is now just about six days away. It's Friday, and uh, we had some news this morning as Steelers cornerback Justin Lane was arrested in Cleveland uh, for, uh, well, he had an outstanding warrant and also uh, charged with felony gun possession. Um obviously that's the news of the day, but one of the things we had on our list of things to talk about still was the Steelers possibly looking to cornerbacks in later rounds uh, as a position of significant need. We talked about uh, the idea that they could take a cornerback early. And I made the argument that I think it's their number one need this off season. Uh, it certainly doesn't seem like that's going to play out at the top of the draft, but we wanted to go back and talk a little bit more about guys that could be targets for the Steelers in later rounds. And I would have to say that today's news makes that at least slightly more likely. Yeah, I mean, listen, now they don't even have depth. Like, if he wasn't going to start. Like, because who's on the team outside of the four we know, which is Pierre Lane, Sutton, and Hayden. It's like, then I think it's Steven Denmark. Um, Trevor Williams is a vet that probably is just a gunner. There's not much like in the corner room. And if Lane, this does, this obviously doesn't mean Lane's going to be kicked off the team, but we got to see how it develops. Cause if Lane's gone and I mean, it, it would have been worrying if Lane was a starter anyways. And I think we'll get into that, but if Lane's gone now, I think they have to double down at corner. Like I legitimately believe they have a double down need or they have to, draft one and then go out in free agency and sign someone. Um, we talked about them potentially going out after the draft, signing a few free agents to fill the needs that they have still, because we don't think they're going to be able to fill every single need through this draft. It's just too many needs across the board. So maybe that's, that's a route for corner. Maybe it's a draft pick around four and then a, a vet corner, perhaps there's still a, a few vets out there. Like Brian pool is out there. I, I think he would be a very interesting addition to the team. So it's not like that. Um, that market is completely dried up um, just yet. So I'm interested to kind of see how that plays out. But, yes, I think that cornerback, I think we're – tackle is a big need and one of the important – center is a huge one. Running back is another one that's obviously a gaping need. But cornerback, I think at this point, I think it's probably a top three need. And, you know, when I, my, when I made my argument, I, I thought the reason was it's, it's a three-tiered need. Uh, they have, you know, your slot corner is a starter, and right now their starting slot corner is either James Pierre or Tr Trevor Williams. I mean, it's it's not it's not a good. I mean, and Lane doesn't even really factor into that equation because I don't really consider him to be a slot guy. He's more of an outside guy. I guess you could move Cam Sutton inside and play Lane outside, but um, so I, I think there's that need. They they have uh, a depth need just because they're just they don't have enough. You play with four corners regularly, and they've got four, maybe five guys you could consider to be NFL players right now. I mean, they just need more bodies on the team. And then Joe Hayden's on the last year of his contract. If you sign someone like you're talking about, uh, who's a, probably going to be a one-year stopgap, there's a future need as well at this position. I, I think, and the Steelers have struggled so mightily to draft cornerbacks that you almost feel like, you know, it's like hiring a minimum wage position. You need to you need to draft more than you need. You need to, you know, if you really need two or three guys, then you probably need to draft four or five. And obviously they're not going to do that, but I feel like that's what it would take for them to really shore that position up this offseason. So I, I think it's a really strong need. And I, I do think Lane getting arrested today certainly elevates it a little bit, but I, I was not impressed with his play when he's been in forced to service and the fact that Pierre got playing time ahead of him to me really suggests that the, the Steelers haven't been all that impressed either. So I'm not sure that whether Justin Lane is on the team or not, that, that really matters that much. I still think, although it certainly doesn't give you a lot of hope that this former third round pick uh, is, is going to pull out of what appears to be a pretty big slide with his career anytime soon. Uh, when he goes out and gets into some off the field trouble in addition to struggling on the field. But I, I think in general, he wasn't a big part of the plan this year. Yeah. I mean, well, he was last year. I thought he was a really good gunner. So that's a special team is named now. So that is where it will affect you. Cause I thought he was a very, very good special team last year. Those guys have, those guys have, have their way in the NFL, right? I mean, I think Lane could stick around as a good gunner. Like he's one of the, 
one of the better gunners in the NFL. Statistically, you look at it last year. He was phenomenal. Justin, J- James Pierre, I think I, I completely agree with you. This, this need, at least, is going to completely constitute on what we see from James Pierre. Because he played about 20 snaps, including in the playoff game, which I don't think anyone saw coming. And he actually did pretty well in those very short snippets we saw of him. My thought process is I think they're going to do this. Uh, let's just assume they draft a round four corner. That round four corner is going to compete for a starting job right away, um, which, hey, if you can get a solid start in round four, you take it any day of the week. But also, if, if that round four corner isn't ready, I think we see – Sutton and Hayden in just base at, at the two boundary spots. And then I think you're going to see Sutton kick inside of the nickel and then probably Pierre come in in sub packages on the boundary. They kind of did that last year in dime um, when they had some rotating pieces um, where they would have, sometimes they would sub out Nelson or Hayden and put Lane there um, on the outside. And then that eventually became Pierre. So Pierre has experience in that role. Um, so, I, I mean, listen, I like James Beer. I think he has potential to be a starter. I just don't know if I want to find that out, you know, as an urgent need. That's a question mark. He could be good. And I, I think the Steelers I, the Steelers are reportedly pretty high on him. And I can see why. There's a lot of good traits there. But I'm not sure if I would want go into, to, you know, camp with no one else to compete with him because I don't want to find that out, you know, just with nothing there for, for Pierre. Um, but I, I do like – what kind of what he said last year at training camp, you know, he just kind of put his head down and worked and seems like a gym rat and, and kind of a guy that just works ahead. So always a good sign when you can have a guy like that. Yeah. And I, I think I'm with you on Pierre. I, I I'm pretty high on him. I actually thought he looked really good in training camp when I got down, I got to go down there a couple of times out of Heinz field last year uh, and see them practice. And I thought he looked really good. Then I was very impressed with him. I actually, uh, it was like the last day of training camp or one of the last days of training camp. And certainly the last day I was there and he, he made a nice interception along the sideline. And uh, I asked, uh, I asked to interview him. I was like, yeah, can we get, can we get that guy? Cause I, I think he could be okay. And um, I don't think we did, but uh, you know, I, I thought I, I really like him, but I don't want to find out that a second year undrafted free agent can be a starter because he's, because the team has put themselves in a position where he's their best option. Like if a second year undrafted free agent comes in and beats somebody fine, but the, like those guys should not. And I'll say the same thing with JC Hassenauer at center. Like, I don't think he's some kind of like hopeless lost cause that could never be a productive NFL player. But if you're going into the season with that guy as the presumptive starter, that's a really bad situation because the chances of, all of those guys working out is slim, right? That's why they were undrafted free agents. Like, is there some world where uh, those two guys and Kevin Rader and Robert Spillane and, uh, you know, Anthony McFarland all turn into pro bowlers? Uh, I mean, it's possible, but like anytime you have that little pedigree, you're really, really working narrow margins to try to get productivity. And, And that's where I think cornerback has to be way up at the top of their 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 to-do list now i think we both kind of agree that it doesn't seem like it's very likely that they're going to address quarterback corner on the first two days i mean th- there have not been that many guys i've talked to asante samuel uh maybe a notable exception uh, that, that seemed like mm-hmm. and, and even he seems like a bad fit for their draft position not really great value at 24 and probably long gone by 55 so I mean, is, is this a is this pretty much a day three thing, or, or are we still thinking that they could take a corner earlier than that? It's possible. Remember, they went to the, the Georgia Pro Day, so that there are two guys there in Eric Stokes, Tyson Campbell, and also the one people weren't talking about, DJ Daniel. I think he could be a round four pick. Um, DJ Daniel is a guy who is who's a little bit bigger, um, plays press, gets up there, but can work in off man, um, and he he gave Jamar Chase fits in 2019, so. This is a guy, if he had played this year, he was only sidelined because of a hamstring injury most of the year, and it kept re-aggravating. Um, but if he, if he played this year, I think D.J. Daniel would be a top 75 pick. So he could be really good value, I think. Um, but there, there are other guys, Benjamin St. Juice, they've met with um, out of Minnesota. He was at the Senior Bowl, and I thought he did pretty solid at there as well. A bit of a longer guy. Um, 
kind of the guys, you know, he's the type of guy the Steelers would like, I think, um, type of corner they look at. I also think, and I talked about this in recent days, I think a fit for them, Sean Wade makes a lot of sense. Yeah. I, I think he makes a lot of sense because this is a guy – didn't play well in the boundary last year, but again, they don't need a boundary guy. They don't necessarily need it because if, if Pierre's the main depth guy on the boundary, I'm, I'm okay with that. I'm okay with Pierre being the main depth guy. Now what, what, now what he would bring and Wade is great athleticism because he's very explosive. He tested like that. And I think he can be a safety nickelback hybrid. So he gives you safety depth and gets you some, some stuff at that nickelback position. He can be the dime backer if you need him to. Um, and you want to bring in maybe Pierre there on the boundary and dime. Um, which I think is possible. And then you put obviously Sutton in the slot and then Wade at Dimebacker. Because when he when he has things in front of him, I think Wade plays phenomenal. And I think he could be a really good safety or nickelback. Um, so I, I really like that fit for them. Um, another fit that I think I'll, I like, um, Avery Williams out of Boise State. Uh, this was a guy that could replace Justin Lane as that special teamer, one of the best special teamers in the draft. Um, also has kind of dual threat ability on both sides of the ball. He played a little running back, um, good kick returner. Um, Williams is a guy that they sent Danny Smith to watch. I think he could be a guy that they, they really like there. Um, and, and he could be a pretty good sub-package cornerback um, as well on day three. I, I like that fit for them. And then another one, um, Robert Rochelle out of Central Arkansas. This is a guy, I think he was also at the Senior Bowl. Um, but he, he's a guy that really tested out of the gym, very explosive. When you look at a guy that, that is a Steelers corner, this is the guy. Um, plays great off man, very fluid. I think this is the one thing that has gotten Justin Lane. It's the fact that he's not very fluid. He's a good athlete. I still contend I think Justin Lane would be a better safety. So if he's on the roster, I wouldn't mind them trying that out. Um, I think he has the physical profile to be a pretty good safety. But Rochelle's a guy that, that is very fluid. He's about 5'11". Um, he's long, can, pre, can play press man has really good ball production, the ball skills that they valued recently. I would like Rochelle maybe in 128 there. Yeah, now some of those guys you talked about are high, I think higher picks like St. Juice. He'll he'll be, I think, I think almost certainly a day two or or, or early fourth round pick at the latest. Um, same with, with the Georgia guys. Uh, probably the same with Wade. Uh, what if it goes beyond that? What if it gets into the sixth and seventh round? You talked about Rochelle. Um, yeah, he's probably in that maybe that hole where they don't have a pick in the fifth round, but he could go late in the fourth. Trill Williams from Syracuse, probably the same. Uh, but but what about late? Is there like a late day three guy uh, that you think they could take a flyer on? Maybe for that just pure depth, just talking about the, the, the lack of bodies there in, in that cornerback room. Yeah, I mean, there are a few guys. Avery Williams, as I mentioned, is a possible name in that, um, that basket. Um, a, a guy I will throw out is Shamar John Charles from um, App State. I think he's a pretty interesting player. Who who was He's a special teams ace. Again, with those late-round picks, they really value those special teams' abilities. And he's, a, he's an ace that's a really good gunner. Um, I think he's really, really twitched up as an athlete. Very, very explosive downhill. Um, and he, he's a guy that's very long and, and has great ball production throughout his career. Um, so I, I do like him. I think he can actually, the thing is he's big. He's, I think he's maybe he's about, I think measured at six foot um, at his pro day, but he's actually a guy that I think that fits better on the slots. So I think he's a pretty interesting piece that they could use um, as a depth piece. Um, you know, so other guys. How about Tariq Castro to, fields at Penn state? Didn't he go back? Did he go back? Okay. Yeah, I think he did. I think he did okay. go back. Um, and the only reason I know that is because I think I saw Penn State fans hyping up him and Joey Porter Jr. the other the other day as a tandem, uh, which is a pretty good tandem, by the way. Um, so yeah, that is solid. That is solid. Yes, he did go back. Sorry about yeah. that. Watch out for Joey Porter Jr. By the way, that guy looks like it's gonna be something. Um, but. Uh, uh, Shakur Brown from Michigan State's a guy we talked about the last time, I think. And, and I think he's a decent fit for, for their scheme, especially as a slot guy. Uh, what? If, um, there's a local guy that we could talk about as well, Jason Pinnock, perhaps. Um, in this yeah. Slam. Now, that, that's a – anytime you're talking about taking a pit corner and, and putting them into the Steelers scheme, it's like a total projection because Pinnock's played nothing but cover four in the Steelers – basically don't ever play cover four and so 
But when uh, they do play it, they're bad at it. <laughs> yeah. And so uh, it should be interesting to see how that goes. But I think he's a – if you're talking about a depth guy, I think you do a lot worse. I think he's got – good physicality and and good size and probably projects as a decent special teamer. Although I don't really recall him doing a ton of that with Pitt. Yeah. I think he's a little bit of an option. I think both of the OU guys, Norwood and Brown. Um, I think Trey Brown, I think was, was pretty good. Now the senior rule um, had a little bit of buzz coming in, coming out of that. Um, and I, I think he's a guy that is super experienced, pretty aggressive. I think he can kind of play both outside and inside, but I think his best fits probably on the nickel. Um, and I like him in that area. And, and he, listen, he played with a lot of cover one, kind of those single high looks with a lot of blitzing and at OU scheme. The Steelers do that a lot, so I think he would fit well and, and not have to acclimate a ton to that scheme. So I like what Trey Brown brings um, to the table. Um, so, someone else, Marco Wilson out of um, Florida is an interesting thing, um, player. Obviously, shoe throwing incidents aside, which which will <laughs> you probably got asked about that by every team, right? I mean, <laughs> what was he thinking? I don't know either, but um, he tested well, and I, I think there are some tools. And he has he's got the uh, football bloodlines, so potential guy there um, as well. And, and there there are are some other guys, you know, that could potentially be there. Zach McPherson um, out of Texas Tech. Um, Elijah Griffin out of USC, I think really interesting. I think he's better than uh, where he might go. Um, one guy that I do want to mention, we didn't talk about him, but I think he could be a, an option in that round three, round four area um, because they were at his pro day. Ambry Thomas out of Michigan, I think, is a pretty strong contender here. Yes, he was an opt-out. I know Colbert said potentially they would not select many opt-outs this year. Um, but I think he's, he might be the exception to this rule because, again, they need a cornerback really bad. They like those Michigan guys. He's a guy that's played press, played a lot of off man, played in zone. He, that, that Don Brown scheme that Michigan has is very similar to the one that Tomlin and Butler run. And this is why I think they've, they've kind of moved a lot to these Michigan players like Bush and Warmly because they do a lot of things. And you see them sign a lot of UDFAs um, for Michigan as well because they do a lot of the similar things that – that the Steelers do. Um, so I think he's a guy that we can look at and say, this is a dude that that could potentially be a starter from day one. Um, high upside guy that I think falls to the fourth round, perhaps only because only because he opted out, but he did have a good pro day. So maybe it would be at 87, but uh, I think he's a, he's a pretty strong contender to be drafted by the Steelers as well. In general, I think it's pretty clear that the Steelers need some help at cornerback. And, and one thing to remember, if you're talking about thinking about some of these free agent guys, they're probably at this point going to wait until after the draft and after that May 3rd um, deadline for impacting the compact formula, because at this point it doesn't make any sense uh, to bring a guy back that's going to do that. Uh, and the last thing I'll throw out there is like, do you, <laughs> I wonder if they feel badly about Steven nelson right now because man like with that cornerback position and this entire conversation changed pretty drastically if he had avoidable year extension or was just still here seeing as that they have i don't know five million dollars in unspent cap space at the moment he certainly could be taking up yeah well the question is do they feel worse about that or did they feel worse about letting hilton walk for six million a year I don't know. Now I know they front. I know the Bengals like front loaded that to have like an eight point three million cap hit this year, which it's kind of tough to contend with. But I, I mean, Hilton wasn't exactly expensive. He was let. I think he was less expensive than I thought he would be. I thought he would get eight mil somewhere around that range. He only got six mil, and then he went to a division rival on top of it. I think Hilton might be the bigger regret. Although re- cutting Nelson still is pretty. That's puzzling, and and I don't even think he'd come back at this point if they needed him as like a. No, I mean, why would he? I don't know unless he can't get a job, I, which I I just don't see happening. Like, I mean, there are some corners still out in the market. I mentioned Brian Poole. I like him as an option, but like Richard Sherman, maybe are they gonna really sign Richard Sherman? Casey Hayward, Josh Norman, Jason McCourty these guys are washed like i mean they might be washed but they're probably better than justin lane probably. <laughs> like that's <laughs> that's gary uh, on conley a justin lane that we're not even sure is going to be on the roster yeah true there's oh there's there's drake kirkpatrick 
Um, Nikhil Roby Coleman. Nikhil Roby Coleman's actually an interesting name. I wouldn't mind that one. But um, Bashad Breland would be, I think, a nice signing if they could get him, perhaps. Um, Darquez Denard, wow. Remember when he was thought to be the Steelers' first-round pick a few years back? That's a name that I haven't said in a while. Um, Michigan State Corner is just dominating the conversation today. <laughs> honestly, um, man, it's not like this isn't a great <laughs> – it, it's well, not look, exactly I don't think there's a single off. position where on May 1st, you're like, oh, there's this bumper crop of free agents. Like, if you wait this long, it's probably going to be bad just about everywhere. Well, let's just hope they hit on it then in the draft and maybe they can get some competent vet. But, oh, man, it's it's a, it's an ugly it's an ugly look right now if Pierre doesn't hit it. Pierre, I, uh, I did one of those uh, pro football focus mock draft simulators – today and i uh i traded down and took asante samuel and uh i'm sticking with that because hey, i can't see a better uh solution for this problem and can, Naj- can Najee play corner no, etn maybe can i don't know he's pretty fast yeah he is maybe they can put him there maybe uh maybe claypool or deontay can pull some double duty this year um all right let's get silly if you're a if the steelers need an emergency cornerback that's not a cornerback and not like make a Fitzpatrick who are you going with non DB. Who's the best corner on the team? Probably Deontay Johnson. Cause he doesn't need his hands. And he's like super fluid. I mean, he just like, it's super quick. So I feel like he could match everybody. Like I feel like Claypool and Juju have the body to do it, but they just get a million pass interference. Penalty. Yeah, <laughs> like, but like Deontay, I think would just match everybody, and then you just boom. I, I feel like he would be the guy. I, I mean, there's no one in the running back room, right? Like McFarland's too small. Short. Maybe maybe an emergency slot corner. I don't know. I, I did not. I did not say what which corner. I just said a corner. What about what about Josh super- Dobbs? Yeah, right. What, what, about, what about what if we went super sized and put Eric Ebron out there? I mean, I think Calvin Taylor could probably press some guys, and he's six nine, so yeah. you know, just hard to throw it over him. Oh yes, yes, yes. <laughs> back, back entry. Oh god, let's put Ben out there. Remember that he's made a few game saving tackles before. He has. He's up one tackle to his credit at least. I don't know. He's got probably got more than that. He's probably got a few. Um, all right. That's that's uh, yeah, that's yeah. some some quality uh, quality football conversation right there. Sure. Um, we're, we'll get back to uh, some seriousness uh, next Monday. We're going to continue to talk about I think some of these uh, some of these later round options at these positions that we think are high round needs that they might not get to since. Well, frankly, they have more of them than they have picks. If there's somebody or something or somewhere you'd like us to go with our conversation, leave us a comment. We'll get to it and address in another episode. Until then, have a great weekend. Uh, for Nick Faribault, I'm Alan Saunders. Thanks for watching Draft Talk on Pittsburgh Sports Live.